I'm back. Um, sorry, it's been like two weeks since I posted. My band's starting to record our demo, and uh, the rest of my band is computer illiterate. So I've been doing all the max, the producing, mixing, mastering, and recording my parts. I've probably spent the last 20 of the last 24 hours on the computer mixing the whole thing. And we're almost done, which is good. But uh, like I said, it's been a little bit of neglect toward you guys. Sorry. Uh, I just want to show some of the records I got in the last two weeks. And, uh, yeah, let's we'll start. Let's we'll start off with what we're listening to, uh, Faster Pussycat. Um, uh, they're just a great, they're not, I wouldn't call them hair metal, but they're, um, they're pretty hard rock for the 80s. This album was 89, Wake Me When It's Over. And actually, real fast, I'm going to say, if you guys haven't noticed by now, I got Blake Sleeves for all my records. Um, real fast, I, I want to say, actually, uh, I was really impressed with Clear Bags. I went to go uh, order a sample from them, and I called the lady about an hour before they closed on a Tuesday night, and I got my sample the next day, Wednesday, at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the mail. So I was really impressed by how fast they shipped out. Even, I mean, I, I'm probably not that far from their office where they, or the warehouse where they send it all out, but... I was just really impressed, and, and then um, they got to me, I loved them, they sent me a catalog to them, and I checked through there, might order some stuff for like, different, whatever I need in the future, but um, the next day I placed an order, and I got my whole shipping the next day too, I ordered about 300, and I have a whole bag left in about 20, I didn't want to order too few and have to order again, but um, alright, yeah, so, I got them, and Blake, I don't know if you know me, but uh, I really love what you did with these. They're fantastic. Um, I call them Blake Sleeves still. I hope we do that. Even though they're from Clear Bags. But Blake Sleeves. Alright. Uh, the next album I got is actually one of the better albums by this band. But it was missing in my collection for them. But Scorpions. Love at First Sting. This actually completes my uh, Scorpions collection. Great album. Has my favorite Scorpions song. Big City Nights on it. There we go. Yeah. And uh, it's also got their biggest hit of all time, Rocky Like a Hurricane. But it's an alright song, but it's not their best. Um, this next one I already had, but I couldn't pass up because this was a uh, promotional copy. But Poison, put the cat dragged in. With the uh, Capitol Records thing right there. Where is it? Um, it's a good album. They're really glam, have more of the poppy sound. The guitarist in my band hates these guys because he thinks they're too glam. He's more into like the shredder, which I like too, but I can appreciate just hard rock and roll that these guys play. Um, next is Night Ranger, Dawn Patrol. Sorry, I gotta have to angle it to not have glare. Let's see. Alright. There, Night Ranger, Dawn Patrol. Uh, the, this album would be known most for their hit, Don't Tell Me You Love Me, which is probably my favorite Night Ranger song. I have it as a 45 too, but I saw the whole album, and when you like one song of an album, you probably like the rest of the album. That's what's good about vinyl, is you listen to the whole album, not just songs like you buy on iTunes now. And, uh, yeah. Good days, Ben. A lot of connections to uh, Loverboy, I, I, I always saw. They're a little harder, but... I always saw Love Boy. This next one, I saw Lazarus' video for Dollar Bin Finds, and I couldn't pass this one up when I saw it because I hadn't heard it. I didn't have it. But, Men at Work. Lazarus put this in his top 10 for what to get if you have $10. And I found it. It was awesome. Um, I'm not really a big fan of, like, I, I like romantics in the cars, and I guess this is what I'd classify them as. But anything more like Devo, and I, I don't really like them too much. But this was a great album, and I found it in mint condition too, which made me happy. Um, next up, Weed Afford, Dancing on the Edge. Um, I was really impressed. I looked in, on the back, and she actually played um, guitar on this album too. And I knew she played guitar, but I didn't know she was more a lead guitarist. And, Really impressed with some of the guitar work on this album. It's not the best of the 80s, but 
it really impressed me for someone I'd never really seen do too much guitar. And also, a special thing I found was All the Nova, if any of you guys know who that is, played uh, keyboards on this album. So that was kind of a cool bonus. Um, this next few were... my Lazarus posted a couple Holy Grail Rush finds. These are my Holy Grail Kiss finds, because I'm a huge Kiss fan. But, uh, first one is a Kiss bootleg. Electric Magic. And, uh... This album was, or this bootleg is a recording from their show a week before their second album came out, and they're playing to 40,000 people. And as a musician, you can only imagine only having one album out of like 10 songs, and then you're playing to 40,000 people. And the, the recording's not that good. It's, it's a pretty poorly recorded live album, but it's part of a Kiss collection. And I, I love it. <laughs> um, this next one was even more great to have than that one. This is KISS, the demos of rock. Not demons, but the demos of rock. It's got some pictures, some of their album covers on it. And this has a bunch of their, uh... You guys can see that. So a bunch of unreleased tracks. There's a, oh, over here. There's an unre unreleased track by each of them. Actually, uh, Sister was actually on Ace Freely's new album. But, and then there's some, on this side, there's some re-recorded, or pre-recorded, I guess, before they actually released it, versions of their songs. And, uh, really cool thing to have. I love it. That's my new favorite album, I think, because it's just so cool. Nobody's heard that stuff. This next one I found for $10, and if you're a KISS collector of any kind and you ever heard of KISS the Originals, you know that those can go for $50 in terrible condition on eBay. And what it was is, right after the Kiss is alive, when Kiss released the album Alive, their live album, they got huge success. And the record company wanted to bounce on that. So they re-released -re all their first three albums as one box set called The Originals. And this one's got some pretty bad ring wear. But other than that, the discs are in great shape. And the cover's... It's not falling apart, but it's got the really bad ring wear, like you can see there. But for $10, this thing's a steal. And uh, it actually has the booklet inside, which you can't usually uh, get with these. This is a really hard thing to find. They're really popular in Japan, but not so much here. So I'm really happy I found that. Um, next up, I hadn't had any priests yet. So I uh, went out to my little store. And found Jewish Priest Defenders of the Faith. And uh, I was really surprised by how loud or uh, how high up Rob was singing throughout the whole album. Usually he only does it in certain parts, but. Uh, I'm sorry. Shot the track list. My favorite song here was uh, Some Heads Are Gonna Roll. There wasn't any standout songs, but it was a solid album all the way through. Uh, 86, I believe. 84. 84. My favorite Jewish Priest album is still Painkiller, so if anybody has an extra copy of that they want to send me, I'll gladly reimburse you for it. Next up was, uh, oh, actually, real fast. I had a band called Angel that I showed before, and they had a keyboardist called Greg Jeffria. And I was watching the hearing aid video that all the 80s guitars did, and there was a guitarist in there. So I went out and I found a copy of Jeffria. This is, um, Silk and Steel. And this album blew me away. It's really synth-heavy because of the keyboard player who was like started the band, so he's like, I'm going to have keyboards. But a um, couple cool things about this is I got this sealed for $2. And I don't know if any of you guys ever watched Spongebob at all, your kids or anything, but I was young enough that when, uh, when I was younger, I watched Spongebob, and there was a scene where they play a battle of the bands, and they sing this song called Sweet Victory. And it was a really good song, but I never found out who played it. And I was listening to this album, and the second it went on, I was like, I know that voice from somewhere. So I went up, and it was the singer David Glenn Isley, uh, hit one of his solo songs. So that was another cool tie-in for Jeffrey L. But yeah, for $2, still sealed from 86, I'll take that all day. 
Um, next one, I showed another in another one of my videos, Genesis Invisible Touch, which is my favorite Genesis album. And I found this in the dollar bin, uh, Abacab, or A-B-A-C-A-B, -A -A however it's said. <laughs> but at the same time, same lineup of Genesis, and one of my friends recommended it, said I'd like it a lot. So, got that. I haven't got a chance to listen to this one yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. One last shot. A lot of glare. I'm really sorry about the glare, guys. First time with the Blake sleeves. They're just too awesome for the camera. Alright, um, a few more. Uh, another recommendation by one of my friends. He basically said these guys were where the Beatles left off. It's the bad. Um, Electric Light Orchestra. Great album. This album is uh, Face the Music. Um, you guys know this one best from like Evil Woman. It was their biggest hit off here, I think. And then um, Fire on High was a really cool guitar riff, and that's a good some radio play. But I don't know if I'd go as far as saying this is where the Beatles left off, but great band. They Their sound's just not Beatles-y to me. But great album, great band. I recommend these guys. I'm sure you guys have heard them a thousand times, though. I'm just catching up. Next one completed my 80s docking collection with Tooth and Nail. Got this for $2. Great. It's got a Alone Again, which is my favorite song. And then Just Got Lucky is another one of my favorite songs. That was on this album. Solid album. I couldn't pick a best docking album. That's how much I love that band. So This next one was a cool find. Uh, I was going through this one like, uh, it's not a thrift store, but uh, on my hand. Like discount store, uh, I don't know what they're called, but uh, they had some records of X. I went and looked, and I found a Beatles live bootleg from uh, '62 in Hamburg, Germany. So I was like, really early Beatles? That's crazy. And it's got 15 unreleased tracks before on two LPs. That was for four bucks. But uh, the story behind this, because I listened to it and the quality was just pretty bad. And the story behind that album is that. Um, John Lennon at one of their shows just threw a mic and a recorder back behind the stage and said, I'm going to record a bootleg of myself. Did that, and that's where that album came from. It was released after the Beatles had broken up, but it, it was all licensed and everything. It was just an official bootleg, so to say. Um, the last one, recommended by my guitarist in my band, really likes 80s pop. Aha, uh -huh. Hunting High and Low. This is famous for having Take On Me, but the whole album is just as good as that song. I recommend this to anybody who likes 80s pop. If you like that Men at Work album, you might like this. If you like Devo. It's kind of in that same realm of just like 80s. They're not similar bands, but they're similar. You'd like it. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Honey High and Low. So that's what I've been doing the last couple weeks. Um, again, sorry I've been a gone been gone so long, and uh, I've been watching all your videos though. I've caught up on everybody. I haven't got any contests yet, but I've been watching every video you guys put out when I have a chance to. Just want to say thanks for watching, guys. And sorry I've been gone. Bye.